So, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the creep behavior of steel and aluminum columns exposed to fire. That's a general topic and uh, it represents an output from a research project that we've done for the past three years at University of Split together with uh, University of Sheffield in some parts. So the main mo motivation for this research project uh, arose uh, from the question of when a fire occurs in a steel frame structure or perhaps an aluminum frame structure, what's the temperature time history in the columns and what's the way of that temperature time history and its influence on the possible failure mechanism that occur afterwards. So a general uh, scenario is basically some kind of a heating curve depending on the origin of the fire, is it close to the column, is it far further away, do we have a traveling fire or something like that. And at some point there is a, a, a cooling phase which starts to occur depending on various conditions. So uh, depending on uh, the situation where we have unprotected steel or perhaps a protected steel, uh, there is a range of heating rates that's present inside the column. And when the maximum temperature in the column is attained, there is some uh, temporal point at which the, that temperature is attained and, and the column gradually cools down afterwards. So the, the research interest uh, of this project was related to this part of uh, constant temperature and cooling afterwards in the, in the columns itself. So uh, the importance of the cooling phase and the, the phase where the temper temperature is approximately constant is something that's important when you uh, think about what's the temporal resistance of columns in case of fire. Do we need to add additional uh, parameter when we design columns, when we define its fire resistance? So that, that's the question that remains uh, unanswered uh, still today. Uh, is, does it matter or not? This is just an example of a, a two-zone model uh, simulation in, in a steel warehouse structure where we have uh, different uh, fire scenarios occurring inside that um, industrial hall by varying uh, uh, fire load, uh, ventilation conditions. We have uh, different uh, fire curves that may occur in comparison to standard fire curve and the output of these fire curves when they are applied on a structural member. We have uh, also different shapes of temper temperature time histories and some of them have fairly uniform temperature over, over a longer uh, time period which may somehow influence the, the failure mechanisms that occur afterwards. So uh, that temporal exposure to, to high temperatures is something that's um, captured by one of the components that occur in steel and in an aluminum as well. So if we look at the uh, distribution of strain components in case of fire, so the creep strain is the only uh, temporal component which depends on the, on the time exposure. And if we uh, look at, uh, if we want to determine the mechanical properties of steel or aluminum at high temperature, we usually re relate to mechanical strain. And if we want to test the mechanical properties, we either do uh, coupon tests, either by applying constant stress or constant strain rate on the specimen a uh, variation of that is to apply constant heating rate and try to determine the critical temperature and uh, do subsequent uh, coupon tests and recreate a stress strain curve which includes the creep component implicitly within that test. So there is a possibility of coupling these two uh, strain components in that particular test which is something that's uh, used in, in structural codes. And if we want to determine the, the creep strain component itself by um, looking at it, we can only uh, do a test which is at constant stress and constant temperature for a prolonged time period and try to see the, 
the component behavior in, in time. So the current solution to the creep problem as it exists in structural codes is the uh, implicit creep material model which is present in Eurocode 3, which is based on this type of testing. And its origin relates to a transient coupon study which was done in the 80s by applying a heating rate of 10 degrees per minute. And as a result of this coupon study, we have a stress strain law which which is very familiar to you. And with this stress strain law, we have uh, an, an implicit creep component which is contained in its mechanical strain. So uh, this was the starting point for, for the research project. So uh, the first thing that we didn't have is basically uh, what's, what's the mechanical uh, stress strain relationship without this implicit creep component. So the, before we applied for the project, we tried to remove this implicit creep strain component just to see how much creep is present in the uh, Eurocode 3 stress strain laws. So we, we got an approximation uh, of a creep free model, which is based on Eurocode, which uh, excludes the implicit creep component by shifting the yield strain from 2% to 1%. So this is our estimate of the creep free uh, stress strain law, which could be used on the basis of the original Eurocode 3 model. So this was also motivation to do uh, creep research on the behavior of steel columns because the implicit creep uh, component, if this is true, is, is very small in the, in the original Eurocode model. This project started at 2015 and it ended at the end of uh, 2018. Uh, so the lead institution was my faculty of civil engineering, architecture and geodesy and our partner institution was University of Sheffield Department of Civil and Structural Engineering, Professor Burgess. The objectives of this project was basically to uh, determine the creep properties of frequently used alloys in Europe. So we, we could choose any alloy we, we want because uh, there are no virtually any uh, data on the creep properties which are present for uh, European alloys that, that are being used in, in Europe. So we decided to do uh, a coupon and column study on steel grade S275 as a representative and for aluminum we, we chose the 6082T6 alloy as a representative for, for this study. So these two alloys are similar in terms that uh, aluminum of this grade has a proof stress which is equivalent to the steel grade's uh, yield strength of around 275 megapascals. So it, it, it's a good alloy for comparison in terms of uh, uh, resistance. The methodology that we've used uh, for this project, well, we, we try to uh, go the full, the full circle, which means not to do the coupon tests itself but to try to conduct uh, larger specimen tests in order to verify the model that we obtain. And as a result of this uh, circle, try to uh, find uh, some kind of uh, uh, interface that could incorporate these uh, kind of tests, which we are planning to build in the future. And uh, they revolve on um, building a unified rheological model in, in fire situations. So this, this research study will, will help in terms of the future definition of this kind of model, which will uh, try to take all the three uh, components into account with dependence on heating rate and stress rate. As far as the creep test that we've done, we, we've done the, the basically constant uh, stress and constant temperature creep tests, a series of them, and the general output of this kind of uh, tests on metallic uh, elements is uh, formation of primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, creep phase. So the problem in definition of a creep model for this kind of um, uh, occurrence in, in strain is that you have a double S curve which, cha which changes phases at various points in time with respect to temperature. So it's very hard to, to define a, a unified analytical model to begin with, if you if you have a 
this kind of a problem that you have to solve. The stationary creep test that we've done, uh, we'll basically selected the range of temperatures for, for doing stationary creep tests. We've decided to go with the minimal temperature of 400 degrees. So the 400 degrees in steel is basically the temperature at which yield uh, strength is being affected. We suspected that the onset of creep will be correlated with the start of the reduction of the yield strength. And the, and the temperature was around 600 degrees, which is basically 50% reduction of the yield strength. And that's supposed to have um, also um, an effect on, on creep as well in terms of the um, increase in, in creep strain. Uh, the stress levels, that the levels that we've chosen, you can see the utilization ratio with, with respect to the uh, stress at 0.2% strain at temperature level that's being tested. We've, we've tested at 400 degrees the stress levels which are really high and uh, gradually decreased the utilization ratios of the coupons when we arrive at 600 degrees. Uh, you can see on the right hand side of the table uh, the occurrence of the secondary and tertiary creep phase. So in terms of um, danger, uh, I would say that the onset of secondary creep phase represents a, a practical problem in practice. And the tertiary phase uh, is, is also detrimental, but the secondary creep phase is uh, could be used as a factor for analyzing if you have a progressive collapse coming really soon. Uh, the occurrence of secondary creep phase um, occurred at, let's say, starting for four, from 450 degrees and onwards. Um, during the first 240 minute interval, which is something that's relevant for uh, fire safety engineering in terms of temporal resistance. Uh, as far as testing the uh, creep properties of the aluminum alloy that we've, we've uh, taken, uh, as Tom said previously, so uh, aluminum has uh, problems with temperature in terms that it's uh, temperature interval in which the uh, strength of the aluminum is reduced is far less than steel, roughly by half, so you have the, the onset uh, of creep coming, arriving really um, fast at 150 degrees approximately and at 300 degrees you have like a onset of creep. Uh, the, the secondary phase occurs uh, quite fast if you look at the temperature of 300 degrees. So uh, aluminum in general is very sensitive to high temperature and it's also very sensitive to development of creep as well. So this factor can also influence the reduction of the fire resistance time of any kind of aluminum structure. We started with the 1% uh, Eurocode modified model as a uh, possible representation of a creep-free model. We did some uh, stress rate tests on, on the coupons uh, quite fast, uh, 10 megapascals per minute. So we try to, to compare those uh, stress strain uh, tests with, with our uh, model. So this is the comparison with the modified Eurocode 1% strain model, which uh, by our definition should represent a creep-free stress strain model. So you can see that the results are uh, not that far from each other. So that 1% could be used as a representation. So we proposed the 1% before doing tests. So was interesting for us to see what, what happens when you do the real tests. Uh, as far as the creep test results uh, that we made on coupons, at 400 degrees at high stress levels, you know, we have a prolonged primary creep phase, so there is a very slow creep development occurring with respect to time on the coupon level. At 500 degrees, you have to lower down the stress levels and see what, what happens there. So the onset of secondary creep phase occurs um, very fast in time, as we've seen from the table. At 600 degrees, the onset of secondary tertiary phase comes uh, quite fast in, in the time domain at lower stress levels. 
And as far as the aluminum goes, the, the story is quite similar, although the, the starting temperature is 150 degrees and the end temperature is 300 degrees. So the conclusion is basically the same when you, when you look at the uh, temperature interval for steel as well. Uh, within this project, we also uh, built a test rig at University of Split, which looks something like this. So you can test columns, beams, uh, any kind of a material which is placed inside the tube that you can see on this figure. So the uh, specifics of this uh, test rig is that we use uh, heating of this specimen by means of induction. That's something that we try to do uh, by means of an industrial used induction heater, which uh, we, we wrap the cables around the, the tube itself, which you've seen on the, on the figures here. So the cables generate uh, high frequency electrical, uh, electrical field, which heat the tube itself. And afterwards, we can get uh, the heating of the specimen inside by means of radiation and partially by convection. So with this kind of a um, heating arrangement, you can get more uniform temperature inside the tube itself and onto the specimens also. So this is just a recorded temperature that we can get when we test uh, steel columns inside. So these are the points in the middle of the column. You can, you can see them placed here. So at, at the end uh, side of the columns, we can, we can get a bit of lower temperature because the electrical field is uh, bit weaker at the end of the tube. But overall, if you com compare the, the top lower flange and the web, you can get a pretty uniform temperature within the length of the tube. When it comes to aluminum, uh, it's also good, but uh, uh, the aluminum is not ferromagnetic, so it's, we can get a better heating uh, of the specimen inside if the specimen is ferromagnetic. If it's not, then the, the temperature dispersion is a bit higher in case of aluminium, we have slightly, slightly higher dispersion of the temperatures when we, when we did the tests. So both the aluminium column and the, and the, and the steel columns had the, the same length when we, when we did the tests. So uh, basically what we did with, with columns, we did a classical capacity test. We um, established the test temperature and did the capacity test. Uh, with a, a very uh, low uh, time interval of testing, as much as possible. And this is our capacity of the column. We also applied the vertical force during the test in order to simulate the geometrical imperfections. And afterwards, we did the stationary creep tests uh, by applying a axial force value, which represents a fraction of the capacity force. So that's our pi, which you will see later in, in the tables. And we measured the displacements of the column and the temporal resistance when you apply a certain uh, FB theta at prescribed temperature level. We also did some modeling. Obviously, we uh, extracted some kind of a creep model from the coupon test studies, and we, we got an analytical model which can be implemented in a research software. So I've used research software Vulcan and applied the third component and made uh, Vulcan into a quasi-static model, basically. The problem uh, with the test itself is that if you apply the axial force during the, the column test, you get a lot of friction in the pins. So I try to model the friction the best as I can with, with the help of uh, rotational springs which basically reduced the lateral displacement in the simulation, which is something that occurred during the, the test itself. This is the column length in the model. The slenderness of the columns were approxim approximately 81 and 70, as you can see. So these were class one cross sections, so there were no local buckling, only a plastic hinge formation in the middle, which which is something that happens with, with thick cross sections. Uh, as far as the <coughs> results goes, uh, so we did a number of tests at 400, 500, and 600 degrees 
So we're talking about steady state creep tests. The load ratio, the phi that I mentioned earlier is defined in this line here for uh, prescribed temperatures from 400 to 600 degrees. Uh, you can see the columns, uh, all of the columns that were tested uh, failed within the 240 minute interval during the tests. And if the load ratio was uh, close to or above 90% of, of the capacity force, the failure time was quite low during the tests, as you can see from, from the table here. If you lower down the load ratio by, by level, uh, so the failure time also increases as well. So these, this is the representation of a total of nine tests that we did in split. Uh, the aluminum columns uh, had a behavior with respect to, to creep much worse than steel. For example, so the temperatures that we tested were between 160 and 260 degrees. The, the load ratios were also uh, high, but the overall conclusion is that the columns suffered uh, uh, well, very quick failure time if the load ratio was 90% or above. And uh, in comparison to steel, the aluminum columns had a, a very low failure time when they're compared. So the steel columns uh, could exist much, much higher fa failure time than in comparison to aluminum columns. So some comparisons. So we did a verification study to see if the model with rotational spring is, is all right uh, for modeling capacity tests. We also use the creep-free model that we proposed. And if you compare the model versus uh, test for, for capacity tests in, in steel, you can see that the uh, comparison is pretty good, which means that the model that we used for uh, modeling the column behavior and the corresponding mechanical stress strain model is accurate enough for doing subsequent numerical studies. We also did an explicit creep model anal analysis, so we so I made a quasi-static model just to see if I can model the column failure time, which I obtained during the tests, and also the results uh, seem pretty good. And we have some results on the safe side, which is which is pretty good. Only one which holds on the on the safe side at 600 degrees. Uh, when it comes to the um, comparison using the implicit uh, creep model, the 2% the yield uh, strain model, you can see that the safety level of that kind of a model, the 2% one, at 400 degrees is all right because it falls within the plus minus 10% variation in the prediction. At 500 degrees, you can see that uh, the level of uh, safety is somewhat lowered, so the, that kind of a model cannot capture the, the critical load that uh, was obtained during the test in comparison to the simulation prediction using this kind of a stress strain model. And when you, when you arrive at 600 degrees, you can see that these uh, dots are uh, slightly moving towards the, the unsafe side, so there is a need for uh, further consideration of the creep component when it comes to the behavior of steel columns. Uh, when it comes to the uh, analysis of uh, aluminum columns, uh, the explicit creep analysis, also explicit, explicit creep model analysis also, also show good predictions with, with the same model that we use for, for steel. So it was the same background, the rotational spring column model only a different uh, material model was used for aluminium. The Ramberg Osquid model was used as a representative for the material model. I also tried to make some kind of uh, meaningful correlations. Um, these points represent the <coughs> failure time versus load ratio at different temperature levels. So I'm not claiming there is a direct correlation between failure time and load ratio at each temperature level. Just that you, when you plot these uh, dots uh, in this kind of a coordinate system, there's a 
there's a fairly straight line which um, connects uh, the increase of failure time with, with the reduction of the load ratio. So I think this exists for every steel column depending on uh, its slenderness and the boundary conditions. So I think you can plot something like this for every kind of test that's done on, other, on steel columns. Uh, but when it comes to aluminium, uh, same kind of correlation can be shown because uh, there is not correlation for every temperature level when it uh, comes to analysis of failure time and the load ratio itself. So the very high dissipation of results is present. I would say that aluminium is much more uh, complex in, in terms of its creep development than steel. So this is very good because steel is used mostly in, in uh, designing of buildings than aluminium. So. A couple of conclusions, so as you've seen from the test itself, so there is a reduction of, of the column failure at 400 degrees for steel and 160 for aluminium. That's being obtained by tests. Uh, this happens at high load levels, so there is a, there is a certain uh, probability of failure of columns if the load level in the column is high. So you have to define some kind of a temporal resistance of the column at, at that load levels. And also what's, what's been um, noted is the, that's something that I call the short-term creep resistance, which means that if you test the columns with respect to uh, temporal exposure, the, the resistance time of these columns is, is very low in a matter of 10 or 20 minutes. I would say that's rather low. When uh, the load levels are not about 90% of, of their axial load capacity. So, this is something that's confirmed on steel S275 and the tested aluminium alloy, but I would say that the, the conclusions would be roughly the same for any other carbon steel alloy that's used in, in the practice today. Thank you. Thank you very much.